Hey now, everybody, it's the Rob from 1061 Kiss FM. Here with the birthday boy. Happy birthday, Jerry Valeri. Thank you. I love that even though it's technically not my birthday anymore, you know I like to celebrate for at least a week. So <laughs> A week's giving you some credit. Right, exactly. No, it was, a, it was a great weekend. The only thing that would have made it better is you being around. I wish I could have been. I really do. I know. I'm sorry that I wasn't ten, able that to That 10 do. hours of distance really, really bugs stuff up. Yeah, but you know what, Jer? I'm glad you had a great birthday, and I saw all the pictures and the videos and the pinatas and the kids, and it seemed like you had a really magical day. I woke up yesterday morning in the bounce house. <laughs> <laughs> well, good for you, man. So happy birthday. I had a headache. I had a, I had a birthday flavored headache. That's for sure. <laughs> I love the pictures of you holding your baby pictures or your childhood pictures. Oh, my mom brought those. What a pain in the ass. Boy, the, the <laughs> one you look like a little girl. I know. People were like, oh, I think that's cool. Your mom brought one of you and your sister. And <laughs> yeah. they were serious. <laughs> the one, I mean, it looks completely like a girl. It's not my fault. I had no, I had no decision making sway at that point. I wasn't booking. I, was, <laughs> I wasn't in charge of the books back then. Well, happy Labor Day, everybody! And uh, oh, by the way, I can relate to having uh, embarrassing childhood photos because that was uh, one of my blogs on our website, one six one evansville dot com last week. It was all about how ugly I was as a child. Which uh, I'll say this. I'll say this. That was one of the funniest blogs I've ever read. Thanks, I thanks. disagree with you. You weren't ugly in any picture. You were a kid, and you were going through like awkward kid stages. But your commentary, your your captions, made them. I like I couldn't breathe. They <laughs> they they were so so funny. And it ends with it will. It was like your senior photo of saying it said it will still be four years before I know the touch of a woman. <laughs> four and a half. And people thought you and people thought you were kidding, but you weren't. No, they yeah, they probably they probably thought I was joking, but uh, spoiler alert, I wasn't. <laughs> so yeah, you can check that out uh, on our website that uh, you're probably on right now since you're watching this video. Uh, Labor Day Raw, Jerry, you want to jump into Raw? I thought it was going to be a throwaway show as their Monday holiday shows like Memorial Day, Labor Day, uh, you know, the President's Day ones. They usually wind up, I don't know if they expect a low audience or, or what the, the thought process is, but I've noticed they oftentimes become garbage shows here recently. I thought that was not the case last night. They really brought the heat for my actual birthday. I was very pleased by it. And I was afraid I wasn't going to catch it, but I started it late and I got to see it. Uh, I thought it started out super strong. I thought it ended strong. I thought the stuff in the middle was, was fine. I'm not into any of the women angles right now at oh, all. They re man. they've really lost me with the women's revolution. And, you know, if I could start with one of my notes about uh, the women, man, they really, I mean, I know we say it all the time. They really need to have Nia stop speaking for herself. She needs a mouthpiece because she is not good at the speaking part of this. And that's okay. She's got a look. She's got an attitude in the ring that works. Uh, I mean, she's not like dollar signs yet, but she's she's okay. Why are they ruining her by having her speak? I think it would have benefited her more than Tamina to give her Lana. Boy, that might that might even be the right thing. Although if if that's what we're doing, we got to cut bait on Tamina. Yeah. So there was that. Uh, I do agree in that a lot of what happened in the middle of the show, meaning you had the first segment with Cena and Reigns and Jordan, and you had uh, the last segment with the main event, which I'm sure we're going to get to in detail. A lot of what happened in the middle did seem pretty throwaway to me. Some of it, some of it was. Um, I, boy, the writing's on the wall for Enzo. I, I see it coming now, don't you? Well, let me ask you this, Jer. Let me ask you this. Let me just give you a different way of looking at it. And I'm not sure this is the way I feel, but let me just pitch something at you and get your opinions. Okay. So you, you move Enzo to 205 Live, but you still see him on Raw every week. Is that a step backwards? It, it isn't really, except for who he's surrounding himself by. At this point, I mean, you see Titus O'Neil every week on Raw too. 
Uh, but you know, he's surrounded by Tozawa and, and it's this, that you, you know, it's not good. It's not something people pay attention to. I think Enzo is elevating 205 live to the point that nobody's tuning out of it now. Like they're paying attention to these guys more than they would. But at what point do they bring him down? Because I think it's going to happen. I, well, I, I felt like there was just less heat for him last night, even. And again, let me say that I haven't, I haven't committed to an answer to this, but let me just pitch something else at you. So you've got, when he was on Raw, he was almost like a somewhat manager for Cass when they were together because right. Cass did all the work and Enzo did the talking. And then you had him being kind of a, a, a mouthpiece for himself and then getting buried by Cass in their feud uh, or being a, a manager for the big show is maybe a better way to, to word it for the, the time uh, after they're split up. And now you've got him wrestling, winning, and talking just as much, if not more, as before over these past two weeks, just going to give people that different vantage point. And I will, I guess my thought process is it is a demotion to be moved to 205 live, but it might not kill him. As long as they keep putting him on raw, you know, he's, he's not going to get featured in anything big and he's going to be on a lot of pre-show kickoff show matches from here on in, but they're going to still sell merchandise and the kids will still see him, And, and that'll be that. I mean, my only real thing is, if you see him on Raw just as much, he's wrestling more, he's winning more. Um, he might just he might be in the same situation, if not better, if they handle it properly. Okay, I hope so. I hope you're right. I like Enzo. I do. I, I want to deal see, with him on a regular basis, so I, I, him, I like him. I want to see him do well, and I like same thing with Corbin. I still don't know exactly what Corbin did to get his heat that's affected his push, but I hope that. Neither of these guys are being affected simply by the fact that uh, the guys don't like me. You know what I mean? Like uh, the guys haven't liked a lot of guys sometimes, and it it's it's a very you know post millennial way of dealing with things. Yeah, you know I'm you you deal with that it. The bookers would let that affect anything. Yeah, but it, they are. I mean, that's it's clearly happening on some level. You know what I mean? Right. Absolutely. So, so there's that. Uh, I thought that there were uh, the the matches last night seemed really long, not in a bad way, because Miz and Jeff Hardy were able to tell a decent story due to their length. The main event certainly benefited from being multiple segments. Uh, I thought that it was uh, the matches last night felt long in a good way. I thought Cena and Jason Jordan told a good story. Yeah, they did all right too, and then that got uh, capped off with. You know, kind of, I called it Cena Reigns 2. It was the it was kind of the continuation from last week in that if last week had never happened, Cena and Reigns promo last night would have been really good. It, it right. was hard to follow well, the I'll heat. Say they start, you know, they started Raw off with a recap from last week and with, with editing. Editing out him flubbing the word shovel. Editing out him forgetting what to say completely. When they edited that together, it sounded like Roman Reigns did an A plus promo. Oh yeah, you could you could edit it down to make it look like it was Roman's best work, which in some ways it was. There were glimmers of it, and they used it in that promo. And and him and Cena. No, you. It sounds to me like because of last week, you didn't like what they did last night. I still liked it. No, I really no, no, no. enjoyed I it. I don't. I don't want to make it sound like that. I compare it to. Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Um, it's not quite as it's not quite as good as the original franchise, but still not a disservice. It was, was terrible for me. Oh, uh, it wasn't terrible. You only think that because you love the first one so much. That was a, well. I mean, you could have said like in the Last Crusade, like that was a good one. Last Crusade's the best one. No, the Temple of Doom is. I don't. We listen. We don't agree on on. Indiana Jones. Temple Tem of Doom is the best Indiana Jones movie. Temple of Doom is number two. Oh my god, dude. It goes three, two, one, four. It goes two, one, three, four. Here, see, this is where this is where you're wrong. <laughs> okay, so so all right. Well then think basically I didn't think it was bad. your opinion of Indiana Jones gets an A minus. 
<laughs> yours gets a, I don't think yours is the, I mean, yours is close. You just got three all mixed up. You're well. Okay, moving on. Moving on. You know, three's the one with Sean Connery, right? Yes, I do. And it's in the, and you know, the, the chalice. I got it. Jesus's cup. The, the Holy Grail. Yeah. All right. I forgot the name of it. I All call right. it Jesus's <laughs> cup. <laughs> Jesus's athletic supporter. <laughs> so anyway, forget what forget the Indiana Jones nonsense that Jerry's spewing. The point is, I didn't think I it really was... love that movie Monty Python and the Search for Jesus's Cup. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, this one's already this one's already spiraled out of control. I don't know if we'll ever get it back. So Roman Reigns, Roman Reigns. I just thought it wasn't, it was, certainly wasn't bad. I actually thought it was good. It just wasn't as fun as last week was. Last I, week. I, I, I agree with that. Last week I was like, I want to watch that again. I can't believe what I just heard. Is this real? Did this get awkward? All this, I, I was asking myself so many questions. This time it was like, that was good. I just wish it was last week. And I love that we're still three weeks away from the pay-per-view and they're making me want to see these guys fight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, this one's this one's being handled really, really well. Uh, there's going to be a rematch between Sheamus and Cesaro and the Mini Shields uh, at the pay per view. There was uh, the Miz and Jeff Hardy put on a really. I thought their match was really solid. It had a a lot of time to it uh, because you know it, basically the extra hour this time they filled with you know more in ring content. I thought. I thought they were going to take the belt off of the Miz. I'm glad they didn't. Oh, I didn't get that vibe last night. Although, you know, now that you mentioned it, they it did, they did kind of seem like curtains when they kept reminding you how close he was to breaking Honky Tonk Man's record. Oh. And it, it just didn't seem like they were. I guess I, I wasn't I, even thinking that yet. I hope they just don't do with him what they did with New Day. And, you know, they have him break the record like they broke Demolition's record, and then three days later they drop the titles. Yeah, that I hate the frequent title changes now. And it's worth noting that uh, as Miz is like, I think something like 10 days away from breaking Honky Tonk Man's record, uh, this is Miz's seventh intercontinental title run. And it's a combined number of days that rivals the Honky Tonk Man's one. Yeah. Although it's also worth noting that Honky Tonk Man held the title for as long as he did because he's a total a-hole. And he wouldn't do the job to anybody. Right, yeah. Well, he wouldn't do the job to Savage. Do you think the Miz will be looked back at at some point as one of the best, if not the best, Intercontinental Champion of all time? Who? The Miz. No. One of? He may be up there. It depends on, you know. Um, I, I just hope history remembers him well because he's very good. When, very good. He's gotten there for sure. And when I think of great intercontinental championships, and maybe we just stumbled upon our topic for this week, um, but I think of that run uh, from Mr. Perfect to Bret Hart to Shawn Michaels and Razor Ramon. So like 91 through 94, 95, uh, had some epic title runs and champions in there. When you look at the Intercontinental title and who's held it, it, it's really like a who's who. It, more so than the World Championship because Hogan had it for so long. And, you know, some, sometimes, sometimes the top, top, top guy isn't the guy everybody loves the most. And that usually goes to the Intercontinental Champion. Yeah, they, it's oftentimes the guy they're grooming for the championship or sometimes it's the, who they feel is like the best worker when they want to see what they can do. There's a lot of great reasons for the Intercontinental Championship. And that, like I said, maybe we just stumbled upon Thursday's topic this week. Who knows? Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh, what did you think? Are we ready to go to the main event? Are we ready to just jump right in? Yeah, let me see. Um, did you feel much from Balor and uh, Wyatt? Well, I, I do like the, the way Wyatt said... Oh, shoot. It's later than I thought it was. Wyatt's like, you beat... You know, uh, you didn't beat me. The demon did. And, you know, I feel like... I feel like we're coming up on a, on a Wyatt Balor team. I, I feel like that at some point, those two crazies are going to work Man, together. If they do, they gotta, it's got to be Bray and the demon, not Bray and Finn. It has to be. 
Absolutely. Yeah, I'm realizing now the time. Let's definitely move into the main event, which, by the way, I did love. Oh, my God. I loved the reference of double reinforcing the ring. Yeah. Like, reinforcing is always, like, it's always such a, a cheesy wrestling gimmick. And now they just doubled it by double reinforcing. Oh, I thought it was. And they even showed the ring crew doing it. God bless them. Right. And then they went and they talked to the original referee. I mean, they really made this a big deal. And it was not something I think they promoted all week. It just kind of like, surprise, we're having a cage match. Yeah, no, they tweeted it. I knew it was happening like Wednesday or Thursday this week. Um, but boy, uh, it it's far surpassed my expectations. So many memorable spots from that match. I thought Ron Strowman works. He's one of the best workers for a big guy and the big show could still do it. I feel like this was the big show taking a lot of time off now. Uh, maybe. Yeah. Um, to me, it was like, it was a series of memorable moments. It was that elbow drop, which, uh, you know, I, they made that special with all the replays and it was the crotching spots from the, the rope, you know, the, the top of the cage when they fell off. And it was obviously at the tail end with the throwing them through the cage. Like, man, I just thought it was really well done. You got a, this is Braun Strowman and the big show got a, this is awesome chant that almost seemed deserved. I, I think it was, I think it was legitimately, they were working hard and big show, poor guy. You look terrified up there about to jump, drop that elbow. <laughs> he did. Yeah. And that's just like, it does seem like he's on his exit tour. He's putting everybody over. He's making big memorable moments. And I think he's, I think his contract ends shortly before WrestleMania. And, uh, it's, it's been a pretty fun farewell tour for big show. This one really was a highlight. I thought, and I also I he gets a fall break just because of what Br Braun Strowman said right before we put him through the cage. When he said it's time to put you out the pasture, I thought, okay, he's about to end him and give him a break till after Christmas. I guess I didn't even pick up on that part. Yeah, you might be right. Um, also want to say that, like, boy, they have masterfully crafted Braun Strowman. This is a great example of what I was talking about. When you talk about the millennial style booking with Jinder Mahal and how he was fast tracked to being a champion, this is the way I prefer it to be done. Braun has been built brick by brick, week by week into becoming what we saw from him last night. It doesn't seem out of place now for him to beat, of all people, Brock Lesnar. And it seems out of place for almost anybody to beat Brock Lesnar, but week by week and show by show, they have positioned him to be really, really, really strong. I've really appreciated his build, and I don't mind if he wins on the pay-per-view. I, th I would love it if he does. I think it would, because I mean, th think of how ridiculous it would look as a matchup to have uh, Finn Balor take on Brock Lesnar. Right, you that's know? my point. Even Seth Rollins versus Brock Lesnar doesn't look legitimate to me. Right. No, I agree completely. And this was something that they've really built masterfully. So I'm excited. Plus, I mean, we, we got a little taste of it at SummerSlam. I'm just really excited for what they've got in store. So now we've got two matches at No Mercy that I'm crazy excited about. Beautiful. Yeah. And all it takes and, is the right kind of writing. And Well, and the writing... But also, and I hope this doesn't go overlooked by the WWE, the amount of time in between big pay-per-views. Yeah. I mean, the fact that they're giving themselves enough time to tell a story. I agree. I agree completely. Uh, man, I didn't realize it was so late in the show. I apologize, but it's time for us to, uh, to wrap things up unless you want to throw anything else in there real quick, man. No, we're good. I, th I think we're ready to go. Temple of Doom is the best Indiana Jones movie, and that's that. That's all there is to it. Right. We agree that uh, Indiana Jones and his pop looking for Jesus' cup is uh, the one that was, you know, certainly the best. Boy, what are we going to get more? What are we going to get more comments on in the post show? Is it going to be Raw or is it going to be Indiana Jones? I, I do think Indiana Jones is going to. A lot of people are going to chime in on that. I sound like God a dummy. My brain is still hung over from the weekend. I'm the holy grail. Jesus is up. Jesus is up. All right. On that note, have a great uh, have a great rest of your day, everybody. We'll talk to you on the post show, and we'll talk to you about SmackDown tomorrow.